Hey guys, Hector here from Hearts.Kettlebell.com with this week's Technique of the Week. Today we're going to be covering the wedge, what the wedge is, and more or less how to perform it. Um, over the last, I don't know, several months I've gotten a lot of questions about anytime I post any kind of deadlifting videos, I usually get a question of what's the wedge, can you demonstrate what the wedge is, and you know, how do you do it? So, um, actually a great explanation of what the wedge is was actually um, by uh, SFG team leader James Solstrom, he gave a really simple analogy on what the wedge is. He said, imagine taking like a wooden wedge, right, like something that you hold the door hold the door open with. You take that wooden wedge, and if it's a solid, if it's a solid wedge, you're and you jam it underneath the door. What happens to the door? The door begin to rise, right? And when he said that, it completely clicked in my head as I was for trying to find a better way to explain that to somebody. So. When you take a, a solid wedge and you jam it underneath the door, that door will begin to rise up. Now, if that wedge is made of foam or something really, really weak, it's gonna kind of collapse under the load of the door, okay? So, what we're trying to do is we're trying to jam ourselves into the perfect position for the deadlift, and what that's gonna do is if you do it properly with light enough weights, the weights should actually pop up off of the floor before you even begin your leg drive to finish your lockout. So, we're going to be focused on getting into the right position, okay? And basically, we want to jam ourselves between, like, the floor and the bar. We're going to try to get our hips into the right position, get our chest into the right position, and then the bar should pop. So, I'm going to show you just from the side here, and I want you to imagine that there's, there's two walls right here, and both of these walls go right over the place, okay? So I have to fit myself in between these two walls. That's essentially what we're gonna try to do, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set up and find whatever position is for you. I, I pull sumo, you don't have to do the sumo. If you're a conventional puller, you can do the same exact thing. All the principles apply, okay? So I'm gonna get into my optimal position here, okay? Now, I want to imagine that there is a wall behind me and there's a wall in front of me. So if I set up to pull and I get ready to pull from this position here, you can see how far forward my body weight is, my upper back. So my shoulder blades, my upper back should more or less be right over the bar, okay? But if I'm in this position here, my shoulders you can see and my upper back is not over the bar. I want to get myself more here. Now, really quick, to keep my chest up, I'm not going to squat. I'm not going to drop my hips lower just so that I can get a more upright position. Here's what I mean. So, typically, whatever I would say is, you know, get your chest up. To get into a better wedge, most people will do this. They'll squat and they'll get into this position here. So now what's happening is you have to try to squat the weight up and we're not trying to accomplish that. We still want to maintain a hip hinge. We want to keep our hips high, but then we want to drive our hips in, okay? So I'm gonna get in a position here. Again, here's that wall in front of me. I want to get myself away from that wall, okay? So I'm gonna grab the bar. And now, Without dropping my hips any lower, I'm going to crank my chest up and get my hips as close to the bar as I can. That's gonna lock in the wedge, and you'll see the weights pop. Here goes the wedge. Do it again. Here comes the wedge. That's the wedge in the side position. Can you see how my hips pretty much stay at the height where they're at? And then I just cranked my chest up and drove my hips in, and that created that wedge. I literally jammed myself between that door, and they got the weights to pop. Now, when the weights are light enough, when you wedge, the, 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 uh, 
the weights will come off the floor. Now when you get really heavy, when you're into your 80 and 90 percent, what's going to happen is you're not, you're, you're pretty much, when you wedge yourself, what's going to happen is the bar is going to bend into the position that it needs to be in in order for you to accomplish the lift. So I'm not actively trying to bend the bar. What I'm doing is, is I, as I wedge and I get in a position, my, the, the weights will pop simply because I lock myself in. Now, if you have a hard time getting into this position, you may have some weak upper back muscles. So this, this, these, up, these upper traps here, they've got to be really strong to not be in this rounded position. So you're going to have to really drive your shoulders back. So you see this position here and this position here. Two totally different positions. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to move forward to creating some tension. And we're going to show more of a forward forward angle here. Okay guys, so now we're going to be doing more of a forward view of the wedge. And now what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus, so one of our principles of strength in Strong First and in, in the uh, SFL program is we want to focus on a skill called Dominanta. What that is, is that's the ability to generate muscle tension by focusing specifically on the muscles that, need you, that you need to accomplish the lift. So we don't want to focus on the weight. We don't want to focus on the weight that's in our hands. The more that we focus on the weight, the less likely we are going to be able to be successful at achieving the lift. So what we want to do is we want to focus on the specific muscles that, it, that we need to fire to, get, to plug with tension, to remove any kind of leakage to accomplish the lift. So, myself, I, this is something that I really drill and I really practice this wedge and I practice this setup. And I generally allocate one to two days out of the week when I'm prepping for like the TSC. I generate, I, I allocate one to two days out of the week on just practicing the wedge and mastering and owning the, the setup, owning the position. Okay, master instructor Fabio Sonnen said that the, the setup is your first repetition, and I couldn't agree with him any, uh, couldn't agree with him more. So we're going to focus on the setup. The more we continue to practice this, you should be able to do this setup in your sleep. Okay. So for me, I'm very meticulous and I'm very um, conscious of what I'm doing when I'm setting myself up. Okay. It may look like I'm going really slow and I'm. It just, I got to hurry up and lift already. What I'm focusing on doing is generating the tension in the right muscles. So here's what it's going to look like. So usually how I step up to the bar is I already know what my stance is. And this is something that you're going to have to play with. This took me a couple of years to find the most optimal stance for me. So you'll notice that I take this crazy wide stance. Okay. So for me, over time, over trial and error and practice, this is the most optimal stance for me to get in the best position to have the most optimal wedge to pull. And I actually have, you know, fairly long femurs. And since I have longer femurs, it allows me to have a wider stance and my, my shins, my tibias can still remain um, vertical. Okay. Now, if my stance got so wide, like this, to where my shins are no longer vertical, you see how my shins are vertical? They're more at an angle now. Now I'd be too wide. Okay. But I've got long enough femurs to get into the right position to where when I set up, both of my shins are pretty much straight down. Okay. So when you're mess when you're playing around with the sumo. You want, you have to, if you don't have a training partner, you're going to want to video this. And you want to make sure that you're, you keep your tibias as vertical as possible. Okay? So, what I'm doing here is I'm going to do the, a little movement here with my hips and with my femurs. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to create space in my hip sockets. And it's almost like I'm going to try to pull my femurs out of my sockets here. So. If I had a pair of lasers coming out of my knees, I'm trying to shoot those lasers out that way. So while I'm here, I'm not just like hinging back and sitting here. I'm actively, look what I'm going to do with my knees. I'm actively driving my knees out that way. Very subtle. It's very subtle. 
what's going to happen is, is that's going to fire up the glutes and that's going to fire up glute, the glute med and all these external rotators here, which is going to really help for you to drive through and finish that lockout, okay? And it'll actually help you to get in a really good position. So I'm actively driving my knees out. You see that? Okay, now I get in this position and I'm trying to line myself up in between these walls. Okay, now it may look like I'm just grabbing the bar here, but what I'm doing is I'm tensing my tricep as hard as I can. I'm literally doing a tricep extension and I'm trying to get my triceps as tight as I can. What that's gonna do is, obviously it's gonna generate tension, which is gonna radiate up into my shoulders and help me to stay tighter in my upper back position. But here's a really cool thing that that does. As I, as I extend my triceps, what happens is, is my arms get longer. My arms, as I straighten my triceps here, my arms get longer, and I ultimately have to pull less less of a distance. So I've shortened my distance by like an eighth of an inch, but that's huge when locking out, you know, a max attempt deadlift. So I get in a position, okay? Knees are out. Triceps are as tight as I can get them. Now I'm pulling. So as I'm tightening my lat, I'm flexing my tricep, and I'm going to use this side, and I'm going to pull myself into position to grab this other side. And I'm just slowly cranking and getting everything in as tight as possible. Here's what it's going to look like. Once I wedge, those weights are going to pop. And I'll do this for like three reps. And then I'll pull. Tricep, lat, pull myself into position. Lock out. Give that a try, guys. Master this wedge position. Master actively thinking about the muscles that you need to be using through Dominanta. Don't focus on the weight. Practice these skills, and I promise you, you'll see your deadlift climb without having to use a belt and without having to use straps. For fat loss, if, you're, if you want to use, you can definitely leverage this for rapid fat loss, okay? Ladies, you're trying to build up the glutes, trying to build up the hips, you're looking for tighter, for tighter trunk, stronger midsection, and fat loss, the deadlift can give that to you. It may seem intimidating and like it's a barbell with heavy weights, but here's what's going to happen. When you focus on dominanta and you focus on generating tension through those muscles, what's going to happen is you're going to begin to use more energy. You're like, I'm sweating profusely right now. You're going to start to generate and use a lot of energy. That in turn burns more calories, ultimately leading to fat loss. So give this a try. Let me know what you think. Let me know how it goes. Hector with HeartStyleKettlebell.com.